Hey, it's Jack Darby, and when I'm not getting shot at by Decepticons because of Miko, or taking rides with RC, I like watching video reviews from Vault Matrix. Hey gang, today we are taking a look at Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Class Ratchet. Now, this isn't my normal review setup. I... Because of reasons beyond my control, I can't record in my normal setup right now, so we're going to go with the iPhone on the kitchen table. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. The other reviews, they will be back to normal. So, Ratchet here is definitely a different look than our normal medic. He has this wonderful little weapon here that is what I like to call the Ice Cream Cone of Doom. And it works by just pushing the button, and it spins. So the overall aesthetic of the weapon is pretty cool. If we take it off here, we can see that it is mostly plastic. The little spinning gimmick just takes up a little bit of it. And then you've got the peg back here, but then it tapers off in the staged, mo in the staged look. And it acts kind of like a giant shield slash weapon. And I really do like the look. I would have liked more of a tapered edge or a more rounded edge here on the back, as opposed to this spiky bit, but I guess it works fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. I just would prefer a different aesthetic. So, taking a look at the figure itself, it is actually really well detailed and very nice molding in the plastic. Now, a lot of folks are calling this um, kind of a Dinobot homage, specifically Dinobot 2, because the reason they're doing that is this chest is very similar to Dinobot 2 even got the center glowy bit here. But his face is what everybody is talking about. Now Ratchet's face is definitely different and this is very much looking like Dinobot the second. Now if you don't know who I'm talking about, go back and watch I believe season two, end of season two, beginning of season three of Beast Wars, the original Beast Wars series. There was a character named Dinobot who, <clears throat> well, he did something awesome and then Megatron t tried to clone him. The overall aesthetic and overall look of Ratchet's face is very, very cool. I understand that they're going for a monocle look here, and you can kind of see a little bit of Ratchet's normal eye back there, but overall, I think it's a good aesthetic. He does have a little bit of light piping in the back that releases some amber light in his one eye. The other eye is painted, and that's about it. But, like I said, it is a very cool head, very much a Dinobot homage. As I said, the overall aesthetic is very cool and very prehistoric, we'll say. Plus, there is a nice paint applications going on, especially on the feet. You've got a kind of a fading paint job on the toes, and overall the figure just is really actually pretty nice looking. Now originally I was not really keen on this figure. I thought that this guy was going to suck hard, but it's grown on me in the couple of days that I've had it, and I actually think this is a pretty cool figure, and it looks awesome. I really can't wait for the customizers to get a hold of it and just repaint the heck out of this guy into a real Dinobot homage. I mean, it's close right now, but it could be so much better. The overall look of the figure is good. Posability is exactly the same as the original Deluxe Class Ratchet. Head swivels from side to side, and that's all you're going to get. Shoulders are on a ball joint, and then there is a swivel joint right underneath that. The, there's really not so much... Well, there is an elbow, and then there is another joint here at the upper arm. So you get this weird posability that... It's a little bit odd, but that's due to the transformation. Hips do rotate a little bit, but not a whole lot. There is a ball joint in the hip swivel right underneath that, and a double knee for the uh, transformation. And then the feet have a little bit of articulation. Now, many of you might realize or remember that I had had a problem with my original Deluxe Class Ratchet, where the panels, the back panels for the ambulance, or the windscreen for the ambulance, did not peg into his legs. Well, I'm happy to report I do not have that problem. And that's because there are little tabs, little clear tabs, right on the edge of the wheel well that peg into a slot on the legs. I have to dig my original ratchet out of storage to make sure that I don't have that. I could have just tra transformed it incorrectly. That is entirely possible. I am apparently nefarious for that. Overall, though, I like the robot mode. 
like I said, I would like a little paint to be changed, maybe here in the shoulders, and maybe do the head up a little differently. But overall, the robot mode is very cool looking. Now, the one thing I didn't talk about with this weapon, and I wanted to mention the Dinobot homage first before I talk about the weapon. The weapon is very similar to the original Beast Wars Dinobot. It does have a spinning gimmick, like I said, but then it opens up exactly like the original Dinobot's weapon, and it forms a spinning shield. Instead of, well, for Dinobot, instead of just the shield, though, we've got this little Gatling gun. More of an homage to, I would say, Rhinox than Dinobot, but still very, very Dinobot-esque. And like, like um, Rhinox, we've got more of a Gatling gun going on here, a four-barreled Gatling gun, as opposed to the sword that came with Dinobot. Ratchet's transformation is exactly the same as his original counterparts. So all we're going to do is lift up the backpack and push the head down and kind of put the backpack in place. Take the arms and reach into the inner forearm and fold the entire panel up, thus allowing us to swivel in the hand. And then take the shoulder and push that shoulder back along the back and line it up so it pegs into place and then swivel the arm into down and take the forearm and swivel it up and peg that into place. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So flip up the panel, fold up the fist, take the shoulder and push it all the way up against the back into the peg it in and then fold the arm down and towards the rear of the vehicle and there we go. Hardest part of the transformation done. For the front, first we're going to unpeg the front windscreen of the ambulance collapse the feet, take the shin and flip that around towards the outside of the figure and fold it around and in. Then peg the front of the vehicle mode together like that. And slide the fronts or the windscreens and doors of the ambulance up. And this is where things get a little tricky. We're really supposed to be sliding that up underneath this green part, which are the lights and si which are the sirens. So I like to fold it up and then what I did was I put them together. I took the entire front of the vehicle, pointed it up away from the figure, and then slid everything in. And there we go. And the last little thing we need to do is just fix that little panel and attach to the giant ice cream cone of death. So here we have the ambulance mode, and to be honest, this has to be the most rockin' ambulance I have ever seen. You can peg the ice cream weapon into any of his multiple ports. He's got two up here on the roof and one on each side, so you can plug it in wherever. I wish there was a way that I could just plug it like this, or maybe take the cone part off here and plug it in so it has a giant ice cream cone going around. Giant green ice cream cone. Now in the directions, it shows you kind of putting the thing off to the side like this and then opening up his gun. That looks pretty cool. It doesn't really work when it's pointing forward. You're going to cause some issues. As you can see, we, can ha we have an engine exposed. And overall, I have to say, I like the ambulance mode. I think it's a very Mad Max-like ambulance. It's very cool. My only complaint is, again, like the original Ratchet. I wish there was more paint. I wish there was more paint here on the side of the doors and just maybe some more general, nice or better paint schemes. Also, I think I'm gonna take a uh, like one of my panel lining brushes to this thing because that would really add some nice detail. Also, the giant thruster in the back or the uh, turbine here, jet propulsion back here, nice touch. Makes it go a little faster. So overall, I really like the ambulance mode here. Transformation back is just a complete reversal of what we did. Unpeg the doors, which is honestly the hardest part of the transformation, is just getting these things to unpeg. Fold it up forward, open up the legs, just kind of wiggle the, do the uh, fronts out from underneath the siren, flip out the lower legs, Bring the doors around, Urgh, come on, and peg them into place like that. Do that on this side. Come 
on. Shut up. There. Now, the only complaint I have about this figure in robot mode is the ball joint and hips and the knee joints here are a little too loose for my liking. I'm not sure I'm going to be easily, easily able to fix the ball joints in the legs or in the hips. Not sure how to fix these hinges, though, because they're just a little too loose for my liking. The overall weight of the figure does have a tendency to make it fall over in the wrong position or in the wrong pose. Oops. And don't worry if these panels pop off, they just pop right back on. It's not that big a deal. Now, the, the ambulance mode on this figure fixes a major issue that I had with the original Ratchet, and that's in ambulance mode, he just needed more paint. In robot mode, he needed more paint, and this mold fixes it. Last but not least, pop the head up. So, overall, Beast Machine, or Beast Hunters, yeah, Beast Machines, Beast Hunter's Ratchet is pretty cool. If you were not able to get the original, I highly recommend picking this guy up. I think he's worth it. I picked him up at BigBadToyStore.com in the three-pack along with Skystalker and Dreadwing, and I suggest you try there first. So guys, I've been Bolt Matrix. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Dreadwing. This is perfectly normal. Bots of your age always have this kind of procedure done. Is that so? Well, I'm really kind of worried about, you know, scarring and how much it'll hurt and, you know, that kind of thing. Well, that's perfectly understandable. I mean, it is slightly invasive. Well, here, let me, let me show you the tool I'm going to use. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, that'll really put my mind at ease if I can see what you're going to use on me. All right, here we go. By Primus's ghost! <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> oh man, I love my job.